Hey gang, I'm going to explain the Biotechnology and the Law Project. This is a joint venture with the Science and History courses of the 8th grade. And we're trying to figure out how can we reap the benefits of biotechnology in a way that's moral, in a way that's fair. And as you know, we've been uh, lear learning about advances in biotechnology and scientists can do some miraculous things with DNA. They can sequence DNA, they can change DNA, they can copy DNA. And there's some interesting benefits to, to society, but there are some important questions, uh, ethical and moral questions that are, are raised. And these advances are progressing fast, really fast, faster than our laws can keep up. And it's, it's time for us to address this problem. And so you are given the problem. You are going to propose a bill that you hope to get passed in the United States that will regulate or deregulate uh, one use of biotechnology. So some of you are going to become experts on cloning, others stem cell research, and then finally genetic modification. And the final product uh, will be of your choice. So a letter, a pamphlet, uh, a poster, an infographic, something that's going to propose your bill. And there's certain components of your proposal. Uh, you need to have an explanation of your biotechnology biotech uh, as well as the benefits uh, of this technology. You're going to explain the uh, moral and other uh, problems. Uh, the ethical concerns that are raised. You're going to describe your bill and make sure you are um, explaining uh, key terms. Uh, you can explain why this bill is needed and how it helps solve the problems that you have identified. You also need to acknowledge uh, and respond to critiques of your bill. So you have to sort of foresee uh, problems with your own bill. And you are going to actually send this uh, product to somebody who can affect change, whether it's a senator or a head of an organization. And of course, you need to cite your sources. And this is the part in which the history class is going to be helpful. Uh, you will learn from your history teacher how a bill is turned into a law and some of the uh, important issues w with passing a bill. And so hopefully you will use that information to draft a, an effective bill. And so there are a couple of things. Um, we're going to start off with a Google Doc where you're going to put a lot of your work. Um, you're going to work in teams of three. You're going to start off with identifying information that you need to know. So you need to come up with a list of things that you already know and things that you need to know. Um, so that will guide your research later. And after you've come up with this list, then you're going to come up with something that's called a problem statement. And it's going to be in the form of how can we blank such that blank. So you have to think about what is it that you're trying to accomplish? What do you want to accomplish as a group? And what are sort of the limitations or, or the, the characteristics um, of your, your project. So let's talk a little bit about the problem statement. So for example, let's say the biotechnology is D DNA fingerprinting that we've learned about before. So a, a helpful problem statement might be, how can we draft a bill such that it is useful to law enforcement but does not infringe upon personal freedom and privacy of citizens? So you can see that the goal is to create this bill that's going to be used for law enforcement, but the sort of um, stipulations that it can't infringe upon freedoms and violate uh, privacy. So, and you can come up with several um, criteria uh, as, as I did in your problem statement. Uh, then you're going to, of course, do your research, and there's some sort of check-in assignments, that, mini assignments that you have to do, and then you'll have some time to um, work on your final product. So the check-in assignments, there are three check-in assignments, so I won't read this to you, but you should uh, read the, the check-in assignments. Uh, you know, basically a paragraph, I would assume, for each check-in assignment. Notice there are three check-in assignments, and there are three people in your group, so one check-in assignment per group, but of course your group needs to 
agree to to the content of these check-in assignments and I'm gonna ask that you that all of these check-in assignments are handed in before January 27th um, don't wait until the last minute to hand in all of them um, but uh, I need to make the, at least the third one needs to be in by the 27th and there's some important sites I've uh, shared this PowerPoint online and there's some uh, mandatory uh, things that you need research sources that you you need um, and I have a video tutorial explaining how to use the ProQuest library in addition if you're interested interested in um, um, knowing some of the current laws um, either in the US or internationally here's some helpful uh, links that you may want to use and they might might give you some um, a template or some uh, inspiration for your own uh, laws. Here's the rubric. I won't read this to you. I want you to look over the rubric, but uh, this is the rubric I'm going to use to grade uh, your final product. In terms of time frame, so we're going to actually start uh, using class time the week of January 20th um, and uh, that would be all, all the time you get in class to work on your project, so you probably do a lot of your research then. But outside of class time, um, I'm expecting you to work during the week of the 27th, and your final pro product needs to be in by February 3rd.